हेलो वंडरफुल स्टूडेंट्स माई सेल डॉक्टर मदन श्रीनिवास योर डामाटोलॉजी फैकल्टी सो इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू सी दी इंपॉर्टेंट साइटो डायग्नोस्टिक टेक्निक विच इज जैंक्स मी आर आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू डू रिमेंबर दिस फ्रॉम योर माइक्रोबायोलॉजी डेज सो इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू लुक एट वेरियस फाइंडिंग्स विच कैन बी सीन अंडर दी जैंक्स मेयर अपार्ट फ्रॉम एकेथोलाइटिक सेल्स आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर अवेयर ऑफ द इंपॉर्टेंट फाइंडिंग इन जैंक्स मेयर एकेथोलाइटिक सेल्स विच आर नथिंग बट दी कैराटिनोसाइट्स विच हैव बिकम राउंडेड which have hyperchromatic nucleus and a perinuclear halo so apart from acanthalytic cells there are various findings so let us dive deep into the topic so when the patients are going to present clinically with erosions or vesiculobullous lesions or pustular lesions then we are going to see whether there are acanthalytic cells present or absent okay so if the patient having the erosions vesicles bullous pustular lesions presents what we will do scrape the roof from the base we are going to take out the material put it on the glass slide apply gene sustain observe it under the microscope and we are able to see the acanthalytic cell which is positive then observe whether multinucleated gene cells are seen or not seen if we happen to see the multinucleated gene cells then the diagnosis is going to be herpes simplex viral infection that is herpes infections so this is the picture with this is the picture which is showing the multinucleated gene cells i hope all of you are able to see this where a single cell is going to appear as if it is having multiple nuclei so that is the reason why this is called as multinucleated gene cell and remember in herpes infections we are going to not only see multinucleated gene cells they are also acanthalytic cells positive please remember acanthalytic cells are also referred to as zank cells they are also referred to as zank cells okay so that is about herpes infections and if we happen to see only acanthalytic cells without any multinucleated gene cells so mngcs are absent then what are the important dds which you have to think of so first of all we have to think of the vesiculobullous disorders vesiculobullous disorders in which we have the important intra epidermal blistering disorder which is pemphigus group of disorders pemphigus group of disorders and we have genetic condition which is haley haley disease so how can we differentiate both of them do a direct immunofluorescence if under the direct immunofluorescence which is a investigation of choice for the vesiculobullous disorders if we happen to see this type of fish net or chicken wire pattern under the dif then the diagnosis is going to be pemphigus pemphigus group of disorders so if the dif finding happens to be negative dif negativity is seen because haley haley disease haley haley disease is a genetic condition genetic condition so that is the reason why dif finding is going to be negative and there will be only acanthalytic cell seen so it is a haley haley disease so next possibility is if there is acanthalytic cell present multinucleated gene cells are absent and that acanthalytic cell is having dyskeratotic changes then you have to think of three important differentials two of them are bacterial infections associated which are bullous impetigo and staphylococcal scarlet skin syndrome and the another one is just like haley haley disease a genetic condition which is darius disease so how can you differentiate between these three conditions so please look very carefully if there are dyskeratotic acanthalytic cells and along with that if you are able to see presence of the cocci presence of the cocci then think of bullous impetigo and this is due to the staphylococcus which is going to produce the epidermolytic toxin a and epidermolytic toxin b which are going to target the desmoglein so these these are going to target the desmoglein desmoglein 1 specifically because of which they are going to be facial and well, as well as trunk vesicles and bullous lesions in the children so that will be the presentation in the case of bullous impetigo whereas in the staphylococcal scarlet skin syndrome please remember staphylococcal scarlet skin syndrome the again children are going to present with generalized erythema and also there can be sheet like epidermal peeling in these patients also 
and if you happen to do this and smear just like i told we are going to see the dyskeratotic acantholytic cells in these children also okay that is the zangsmer finding in sssss so next is darius disease which is a genetic condition in which we are going to see the presence of cor rons and the cor grids so if you observe this image carefully if you observe this image carefully the black arrow is pointing towards the acantholytic cell in darius disease whereas if you happen to see this red arrows they are pointing towards the cor grids C O R P G R A I N S core grains and the green arrows. These green arrows they are pointing towards the core rounds. Core rounds. Okay. These are the uh, um, some of the findings related to the Darius disease. My question for all of the students who are watching, Haley Haley disease and Darius disease are going to show the. Uh, what we can say they, these two are genetic conditions so there is going to be some defect in these two conditions can you name what are those atps associated with heli heli as well as the darius disease put your answer in the comment section below so now coming to the acantholytic cells if they are absent in the zangsmer what are all the findings which you uh, can think of so first one is a viral infection which is molluscum contagiosum virus infection in which we are going to see the Henderson-Patterson bodies very very important eosinophilic intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies seen in molluscum contagiosum which will clinically present as pearly white dome shaped umbilicated papules usually seen in the children's over the face and in the adults the lesions are going to be seen over the genitalia okay so that is molluscum contagiosum so in leishmaniasis we are going to see ld bodies which are called as leishmania donovan bodies my question for all of you where do we see donovan bodies in dermatology if you know the answer put your answer in the comment section and also what is the causative organism for the donovan bodies okay and next is in candidiasis in candidiasis we are going to see pseudo hyphae pseudo hyphae so pustular lesions will be seen in the patients of candidiasis and we can see pseudo hyphae under the zangsman and the one last diagnosis which you have to remember is a patient who, one second i will just vanish so that you can see me yes uh, explaining the condition which is degenerated necrosed keratinocytes leukocytes and fibroblasts are seen so what is the diagnosis you are thinking of so let me give you some more clues the patient is going to have a history of drug intake so there will be a drug intake after which there will be constitutional symptoms in the form of fever and there will be tenderness over the body there will be erythema over the body and there will be bullous lesions present over the body and finally there will be sheet like epidermal peeling which will involve more than 30 percent of the body surface area so i hope all of you have uh, understood what is the diagnosis it is toxic epidermal necrolysis toxic epidermal necrolysis so these are all the conditions which you have to remember associated with the zank smear and its findings so i hope all of you have understood whatever was explained in this video so if this video was helpful please do hit that like button and also do remember to subscribe to my youtube channel for more of this content on a regular basis so uh, if you are having any doubts please put those doubts in the comments if you want any video to be made by me please put that topic in the comments below thank you so much students happy learning dermatology bye bye sarvam sri krishna arpanam sarve jana sukhino bhavantu